ladies. Now, before we begin, we are going to have a word of prayer. Let us kneel. Dear Jesus, thank you for protecting us through this beautiful day. Thank you for protecting us through the night. Give us wisdom and understanding and protect us as we do of our camp, not camp. As we do our story time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, this story, <clears throat> it is a part of a man's story, so I don't have a name for it, but it's one of his important experiences that he had. Now, the name of the man Cameron Townsend, I think I'm pronouncing that surname correctly, T-O-W-N-S-E-N-D. And this happened in the year 1935. Um, don't, I don't think, let's see, hardly anyone here, yes, right, 1935. Cameron Townsend, right. Now Cameron obviously started young, and he desired to be a missionary. Any of you children know who a missionary is? Or what a missionary does, yes? A missionary is someone who travels all over the place talking about God's word. Okay, you were gonna say that too? No? Okay, right. So generally, yes, you go and you spread God's word. Now he left his homeland and went to Central America. Y'all children ever heard about Central America? Do you know any of the countries in Central America? Nicaragua. Very good. Very good. Nicaragua. Any, any more? There's one beginning with G. Um, I will speak into the children. <laughs> Thank you, Guatemala. Yes. Okay, so that's where he left and went. And generally, children, hello, those people in those Central American areas generally are quite poor. But he realized that they needed also to learn about Jesus. So he left, he worked first of all in Guatemala, Guatemala, Guatemala. And listen, this, at first he went just as a missionary for preaching, but when he got there, he realized there was a problem. There were lots, even though the overall language was Spanish, there were so many tribes that had their own languages. Okay? And, uh, because they had their own languages, when books were written in Spanish, those tribes were not benefited at all because they spoke their own native languages. And because of that, they were kept down. Only those who knew how to speak Spanish were kind of the upper classes, the other, not the others. No. So... Cameron, sorry. Oh, okay. So Cameron, so Cameron decided he wanted the Bible in the language of these tribes to benefit them more. So he worked hard where he went, and after a number of years, he was able to get that done. Now, the story we are going to talk about this evening didn't take place there, but he left there and left other people to continue that work. And he went to a place not in Central America, but it begins with M, children. It begins with M, not too far from, um, say, pardon? Pardon? Mexico? 
Mexico. That's right. And there he encountered the same problem. He went to a village. This village was called Telisingo. Not sure I'm pronouncing that right. And he wanted also, he realized the same problem, no written language, and therefore he couldn't share out with them the Spanish New Testament. Anyway, he decided this is where he would start. And uh, by the way, to get there, he traveled across America with a, uh, as the people call it, a house being pulled on wheels. And uh, he went and used that to live in. It was he, his wife, who was not very well. So all you people who think you can't come to church or you can't do something for God because you are not very well, take a lesson from her book. She was very weak and sick, but she traveled with her husband while he was doing God's business. Very sick. So sick that he took his niece to help with her. They reached the village, and uh, he asked for the person in charge of the village. It was a mayor, okay? He met the mayor, and he came, told him his name, introduced each other, and then the mayor asked, what is your business here? The, and Cameron told him, I want to live here amongst the people and learn their language. Now, the mayor was taken back. He said, but nobody ever comes to our village to want to visit us, to live with us, or even to learn our language. It made him feel good, though, that somebody wanted to do that. But before they went any further, Cameron had to, had to give him his official papers of permission to do it. So he brought them out. The mayor, whose name was Martin Mendez, Look at them, give the okay, and it, they were into settling. Now listen. He said, um, I want to know you better. Cameron wanted to know the mayor better. The mayor wanted to know him better. Fine. The mayor was glad because this was a village way out back and he hardly saw people so he was happy now of course the villagers saw this strange man come and they were peeping around and looking around the little children were coming and watching and running back but after a while the mayor just told them something in spanish in their language and they left life fell into a pattern now, the biggest problem for them was the food. Um, we know in Mexico, anybody knows what Mexicans eat? Yeah? Um, fried rice and a mix of meat. Tortillas. Right. Okay. Yes, yes, all those things. They eat those things. But that was not the biggest problem because when they ate those, they put beans in them. And uh, um, that pepper, what is it called again? Um, chili. Yes, chili. Right, good. But listen, they ate meat too, but listen to the meat they ate. Tadpoles, worms, and they ate them raw or fried. Of course... <laughs> <laughs> of course, Cameron and his family were not at all impressed with that part. Anyway, he decided, though, to start chatting with the mayor often. And this he did every day because the language they spoke, listen, children, was called the Aztec language, A-Z-T-E-C, Aztec language. But the mayor could speak Spanish fluently which was a strange thing for people from the village. No. So Cameron said, your Spanish is so, so good. How come? 
the mayor said because he he was a part of the army and he had to learn Spanish. Now he's finding that it came in really handy. So every morning after breakfast now, the mayor would come over by Cameron and they would chat every morning. Cameron learned things about the mayor and the mayor learned some things about Cameron. But one of the things Cameron learned was that the mayor was a very unhappy man. He was not happy. Listen, do you know when God made Adam and Eve, he made one man, one wife. One of the things the mayor did was that he had a lot of different ladies. But you know why? That wasn't by choice or whatever. He had a hot temper. I you know what he would want, did with some of the ladies. What, what do you think when he got real angry? Not kill, good dear. Yeah, beat them. <laughs> he would beat them till they decide, no, we are not taking this, and they would leave. He had a terrible temper. And you know what else? Cameron noticed he carried a pistol in his waist. Y'all know what a pistol is? A gun. That's right. It was a gun. And he chat, chatted with him to find out more about these things. He carried a gun because he had made enemies and he wanted to protect himself. Now, each morning, Cam would learn more Aztec words, but this is what Cameron did. He read to him from the Spanish New Testament. So every morning, he would read from the Spanish New Testament. Several weeks later, the mayor came. Sir, can I have one of those for myself? Cameron was excited. Of course you can have one. So he gave the mayor a Spanish New Testament. The, the, the mayor will still come every morning, but one day, oh, before that, when the mayor finished talk with Cameron, he will go to the public building in the village, stand on the steps, and read the New Testament to the people too. He would read it in Spanish and then translate it into their language. And people would stop and listen. But this is a strange thing that happened. He came to one morning to Cameron and said, Cameron, something is happening to me. And I can't understand it. I cannot do the things I used to do. I don't understand. I go to tell lies and that book stops me. I cannot even get drunk and beat up the ladies anymore. Please tell me what is wrong with me. Cameron smiled. You have read in the book how God can change people from the inside out. I think that is happening to you. Keep reading. A week later, Mendez came again to Cameron. Cameron, I... I, I don't want to wear my gun anymore. I just don't want to wear it anymore. It looks like I don't even want to shoot at people anymore. But Cameron, please sell me three more of those New Testaments. Listen to why. I want to send them to my enemies who want to kill me. I will write a note in the Bible, in the book, and say, this book has made me want to forgive you. And I'm hoping that you should read it too to see if you can forgive me. I feel so different inside now. I just want to be nice to people. That was the result of him reading the Bible to him and him even going and read the Bible to others, the New Testament. And that change came about without him even realizing it. Yes, please. The mayor, it doesn't state the age of the mayor, but he couldn't have been younger than perhaps 
far, I will put him around 40-ish. A big adult man, an adult man, yes. So, that result was even more than what Cameron was expecting or even hoping for. You know how it is with us. We pray about things, but then our faith is so small. When God answers the prayer, we are so shocked. The mayor was slowly becoming a Christian without even, you could almost say, trying. God's spirit worked with him. Just by him listening to the word, reading it, and explaining it to the village people, that change came about quite unexpectedly. And he was happy for the change, and he continued to work with Cameron to help to improve his village and to help Cameron learn the language so the people could have the Bible in their own language, read it, and also be changed. I'll stop there. There's lots more in, um, interesting incidents that took place, but time has come. Right, children, what was the name of the missionary? The name of the missionary was Cameron Townsend. Very good. All right. Do any of you remember around what year this story took place? Around 1935. Okay. Do any of you know what country it took place in? You know? Wow. Mexico. Mexico. Okay. <laughs> Do any of you remember um, the main purpose, the main reason Cameron wanted to be there in that village? To teach them about God's love. Okay, do you have another reason? To bring the Bible into their language so that they can understand it. Okay, and read it for themselves. Good. So, when Cameron went, do you remember what they used to do every morning? After breakfast, what would Cameron do? I don't know. Read him the Bible in his language. Read the mayor. Read the mayor. Read to the mayor in what language you say? In Spanish. Oh. Okay. Any of you remember the language of the people? Aztec. Yes, they spoke, as, they spoke Aztec. What? No, just quick. They have to finish. What was the change? Sorry, sorry. First of all, why was the mayor sad? Because he had a very bad temper and he could not control it. And because all his wives, he always left because he was beating them all the time. All right. And there was another reason, which wasn't explicit, but he was also sad, and so he carried something. He carried a gun. To shoot people? Because he had enemies. Okay, so he had some enemies, yeah? He would protect himself from his enemies because he was afraid that they would hurt him. Right, okay. What changes took place in the what changes took place in the mayor? Change his life. He changed his life, all right. He will stop carrying around a gun, he will stop beating. All right, give somebody else a chance to do the other one. Yeah. He decided to give his enemies uh, the New Testament and forgave them. Yeah. And he read the Bible all the time. Okay. And uh, so, okay, I was going to ask afterwards what made the change, but that would have come out from the reading of the Bible. So children, do you read the Bible? How often? Every week? How often? Every week? 
so I want so we, you read the Bible. Every week, so that means once a week you read the Bible. So you read it on Sundays or Sabbaths. Oh, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, y'all don't read the Bible. So don't tell me every week. What should you be telling me? Thank you. Every day. Keep reading it so Jesus can change you too and use you as well. Okay? Can someone pray now to end? Dear Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you that you were able to transform a mayor just by having him read the Bible. Help us always to remember to read the Bible. And help us always to remember that you will never leave us and that you are always trying to save us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everyone.